Georgia Northwestern Technical College wants to help put you to work. Our programs in business, health, industrial, and public service will train you for the jobs available today. GNTC offers schedules in day, evening, and online classes at five campus locations with financial aid options too. You are sure to find a career path that works for you with our variety of degrees, diplomas, and certificates available. Visit us in person or on the web at gntc.edu. Georgia Northwestern Technical College, your career begins here. Welcome to Gridiron Central. I'm your host, Jim Allred. Joining me as always, my tag team partner, Matt Davis from 95.7 The Ridge. Matt, two weeks left in the regular season. Where has the time gone? I hear you, man. It's, it, we say this at this time of year, you know, every single year. But then I realize how many years we've been doing this, and yeah. I think of that as well. It just flies by. But, yeah, man, it's been a fun season. There have been some changes in terms of the region alignments and whatnot. And I think that's made a huge difference. And so we're going to have an exciting finish, particularly to 7AA football tonight. So I know we've got some really interesting things to talk about. And it's going to be an exciting weekend for this community. It most definitely is. We'll get to the game everybody's talking about in just a second. But we're going to talk about another 7AA game that's kind of flying under the radar but has big implications for both teams. That is Chattooga traveling to Dade County. Normally everybody would say, ah, oh, this game doesn't matter. But it actually does. Chattooga is in the position that if they beat Dade County, they will be in the driver's seat for the number four seed and a playoff berth. I'm not, I'm not so sure anybody thought that at the beginning of the season. Matt, can the Indians go to Dade and pull the upset? I think they can. As a matter of fact, this game for me, out of all the other games, was the hardest one to pick gotcha. because when I look at Chattooga, they've kind of struggled on defense this year at times. At times, they've had flashes that they're a pretty good offensive team. But then last week they play against Model and Model's defense shuts them down. Mm -hmm. Now Dade County's defense is pretty decent. They're not Models by yeah. any stretch no. of the imagination. No. But the thing that gets my attention most about this matchup, if this game were played at Chattooga, I'd probably lean in that direction. Yeah. But since this game is being played at Dade and there's so much pressure in this contest and you got to go into no man's land to get over there, even though Chattooga is closer to Dade County than a lot of oh, the yes. other area Definitely. teams. It's still a tough place to play. And watching Dade County play last week against Coosa, you know, they didn't play extremely well, but they played better than I thought they would, especially yeah. since they've been playing with their third string quarterback. They had a freshman at quarterback last week. So I think that Dade County's going to find enough offense if they can get things clicking in this game to get past Chattooga. And I'm going to go with Dade County. For me, this game comes down to a couple things. Number one, turnovers. Chattooga can't turn the ball over much. Number two, their defense has to stop Dade. If they can keep Dade below 10 points, I think Chattooga has a phenomenal chance of winning this game. It's at Dade. I'm a little bit worried about it because Dade, Dade was supposed to be a team challenging for the region title. Now they're one loss away from not even making the playoffs. It's at their home field. I'm going to have to go with Dade, but I'm hoping the Indians can pull off the upset here. Now on to the game that everybody has been talking about just about the last couple of weeks because... After Kusa beat Model, we knew this Kusa darlington matchup was going to be for the Region 7AA title. As long as nobody stumbled, nobody did. Kusa's in the middle of, what, a six-game winning streak? Darlington's in a seven-game winning streak. The winner of this game is your Region 7AA champion, the number one seed in the playoffs with the opportunity to have two home games if they keep winning in the playoffs. Matt, what's your take on this big matchup? Well, the first thing is, I think that people that follow high school football around this area knew that when Darlington came back into 7AA, that meant something. Yes. Because Darlington always has a competitive program. As a matter of fact, I don't remember the last year they had a losing season. That was quite some time ago. And yeah. I know Tommy Eth has never had a losing season since he's been the head coach there. And so they've been extremely competitive. I think that if you were trying to predict at the beginning of the season, what game would turn out eventually being the region championship? I don't think anybody would have necessarily predicted this would be the game, although you may have said this could be a possibility for that. Yeah. And it's turned out to be that way. Both of these teams are extremely physical. They play hard. They're both well coached. I have a lot of respect for head coach Tommy Eighth, and I have a lot of respect for Todd Wheeler. And so I know that they're going to go after each other in this game. You're going to see a lot of run the football with Justin Ware for Kusa, of course, Trey Edge for Darlington. You're going to see a lot of defense. Both of these teams play very physical defense. And so I think it's going to be a very well-played game. And as a matter of fact, I don't want to pick this game. It is a very hard game to pick. And I can honestly say, I, I know Coach Atha, I know Todd Wheeler, and at the end of the night, I'm going to be disappointed for the team that ends up losing, and I'm going to be just as equally happy for the team that wins no matter what happens. 
But in this game, I got to go with a home field advantage and also the fact that Darlington has been in big game situations and they seem to deliver in those situations. I look back on the model game this year and I look back in other games like for example the Gordon Lee game where they got behind the eight ball and they started having troubles but they found a way to win. Darlington just finds a way to win and you can make the same argument for Kusa. So at the end of the day I'll go with Darlington but, but pretty much because they're playing at home. Yeah you know this one for me is a tough game. I've seen Darlington play, I've seen Kusa play. You know, I saw that Kusa model game, and Kusa played a very good game. Model did, too. Look, I, I think in all honesty, you have three teams that are really right there together. Obviously, model has two losses, so they the best they can do is the number three seed. You know, Darlington fans are going to love it because I'm picking Kusa. I, I'm just straight up going to do that. You know, you go by, well, you haven't been on Kusa's bandwagon. Not so. A couple weeks ago, I was one of only two people in the newspaper to actually pick Kusa to beat model in the model game. Um... And again, that was almost a coin flip game. This is a coin flip game. Absolutely. I can make a great argument for both teams. I'm not going to be sad if one wins or if one loses, but because guess what? They're both going to get a home field playoff game, which is phenomenal. It's going to help their gate. Um, I think it's going to come down in the end to size. And I think Kusa's size on both lines is going to be the difference. I also think Kusa's special teams is a little bit better than Darlington's. That being said, if Kusa turns the ball over two or three times like they did against Model, all bets are off and Darlington could win that game. So, And I did want to make that comment yeah. as well because last week Kusa turned the ball over a few times. Yeah. And I even saw in the paper where Todd Wheeler had made the comment that you're not going to win too many yeah. football games turning the ball over like that. They survive that game and move on. But in this game, as opportunistic and as physical and aggressive as Darlington is, mm -hmm. if they put the ball on the turf, there could be some major problems in this game. So ball security is a must for both teams. Yeah, and it goes both ways. If Darlington puts the ball on the turf, Kusa can take advantage of it too. So he says Darlington, I say Kusa. <laughs> Friday night around 11 o'clock, one of us will be right, probably me, but we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> Moving on, Gordon Lee at model. Uh, a game that is important for the Blue Devils. They need to keep winning to ensure... You know, they win this game, number three seed is theirs. Granted, they're going to have to go on the road for the playoffs, but they're in the playoffs for the third straight year. Matt, um, can the Trojans upset Model? I think last week's game for Model was really important, and they were able to shut out Chattooga playing on the road. And the reason I say it was important is because they had some adversity. They lost to Darlington. They lost to Cusa. They lost a couple of big games. And you were curious to see how this team got up for the next yeah. game and responded. And I think they responded extremely well. And so they know, you know, going into this game, why it's important for them to win. And I think they're going to be able to do that. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, I just think pound for pound, Model's a better football team. I don't think their defense is going to have too many problems yeah. being able to shut down Gordon Lee. Because Gordon Lee is a pretty balanced team, but I don't think they're exceptional in terms of their offense, whether it's passing or, or running the football. And I think Model can handle that. And then the second part of that is, obviously, Model's got a pretty good offense, and they're really yeah. going to have to be able to contain the Kyle Watkins to have success. And I'm not so sure that Gordon Lee's defense is going to be prepared to do that. Yeah. So I think Model's going to win this football game. Well, I think the key thing for Model, and I think you saw it last week, you know, a couple weeks ago against Kusa, um, Gordon Power said after the game, our offense is going to have to get better or we're not going to win many more football games. I think the offense got better last week. This is another week. Get that offense humming, get it ready to go because the playoffs are right around the corner and it needs to be in full force because Model can win their first round playoff game. You heard it here. I think they can win that game if their offense can put points on the board. I'm, ta I'm not talking seven. I'm talking 21 to 24. I've said it all season long. If Model hits 24 points, they're going to beat most teams, almost any team on their schedule, a lot of the teams in the playoffs. Get the offense running. I don't. I think Gordon Lee may be able to stop him a little bit, but not that much. Mall's defense, vicious. I still think it's probably the best defense in the Region 7 AA, if not Northwest Georgia. I know Calhoun fans may argue with me about that one. <laughs> but that being said, Model wins this game. One more game for the commercial break. And although the records aren't that uh, records aren't impressive, it does have playoff implications. Pepperell travels to Cedar Town. The Dragons have to win this game if they want to get to the AAA playoffs and continue their playoff string. Cedartown can lose this game and still get to the playoffs, but if they win this game, they're almost guaranteed playoffs. Matt, it's at Cedartown. Can Pepperell win? Anything can happen in given Friday yeah. night, but my assessment of the situation is Pepperell's really struggled on defense this year. They've given up a lot of points. Cedartown has pretty much struggled on defense, but I think Cedartown has been more consistent in terms of their offensive play. 
And one of the things that it, I think is worth mentioning, last week they played Central Carroll. They scored more points on Central Carroll than anybody else has done this season. Now that was only 14 points, yeah. but to me that still makes somewhat of a statement. And so I think that Cedartown at this point in time is a better team than Pepperell is. And the fact that they're playing at home, that also yeah. gives them an advantage. So i got to go with the Bulldogs. I'm going to agree with you. I think it's going to be close. I'm very, very close, and it will not surprise me one bit if Pepperell pulls off this win. I don't think it'll be an upset. I think it's a coin flip game, in all honesty. I think that both of these teams are fairly even coming into it, but I just, something tells me at home, if this was at Pepperell, I'm switching my pick. It's not. It's at Cedartown. I think the Bulldogs are at least one point better than the Dragons at Cedartown. After the commercial break, we have another six or seven games to talk about. Stick around. Georgia Northwestern Technical College wants to help put you to work. Our programs in business, health, industrial, and public service will train you for the jobs available today. GNTC offers schedules in day, evening, and online classes at five campus locations with financial aid options too. You are sure to find a career path that works for you with our variety of degrees, diplomas, and certificates available. Visit us in person or on the web at gntc.edu. Georgia Northwestern Technical College, your career begins here. Welcome back to the show. As always, we'd like to thank Georgia Northwestern Technical College for bringing the Emmy-nominated Gridiron Central to you for the last eight seasons. Back to the lineup of games. We'll probably go quick through some of these. Rock Mart at Central Carroll. Uh, the Yellow Jackets still are in good shape. Still control their destiny for that number three seed. If they can win their last game of the season against Cedartown, they will get that number three seed and get into the playoffs. Obviously, if they were to upset Central Carroll, they'd get a higher seed. I don't think that's going to happen. Central Carroll is a very, very good football team. Rock Mart's improving, not on the same level. Uh, Rock Mart loses this one, Matt. I agree. Central Carroll is obviously consistent on both sides of the ball. They've not given up more than 14 points in any game this year. Beyond the game last week against Cedartown, it was seven points. And so they're good defensively. They score gobs of points. Uh, they're just a really good football team. Rock Mart is kind of Jekyll and Hyde at times. Yeah. We've said that for several years. I'm going to give it to the more consistent team, and that's Central Carroll. Adairsville, Cahulla Creek. Uh, I believe the Creek has scored 21 points total this year. Um, Adairsville, with this win, will cinch the number two seed out of Region 6 AAA, and we'll get a first round home playoff game. More than likely, in fact, that game will come against either Cedartown, Pepperell, or Rock Mart. So won't be much travel there involved from the other side. Uh, again, is gonna win this game probably running away, Matt. I agree, Adairsville, they've only had the one loss this year, that was to Calhoun. They played some really good teams and had great success against them this year. They're one of the more complete teams in the area and they've got some experience on both sides of the ball. So I think obviously Adairsville is your clear cut favorite. Calhoun at LFO, uh, the Yellow Jackets clinch a nut, yet another region title when they beat LFO on Friday night. Calhoun, of course, we will win the Region 6 AAA title. Um, we'll talk about playoffs later, but they also will either play Cedartown, Preppel, or Rock Mart in their game at home in the first round. I just do not see LFO being able to put up a fight with the Yellow Jackets. Matt? I agree. Calhoun's going to be Calhoun. You know, they'll be up for this game, and I think even if LFO plays their best game and Calhoun comes out a little flat, I still think Calhoun's going to win this game, so I'll pick the Yellow Jackets. Gordon Central at North Murray. Gordon Central, I believe, is a, I don't know if they're much improved. They're definitely an improved team over last season. I just don't think they can beat North Murray. I'm going to go with North Murray in this one, Matt. I agree with you. I think that overall, North Murray's a better football team. Gordon Central may make it a little interesting mm -hmm. in the beginning, but I think you're going to have too much offense from North Murray, and I don't think Gordon Central's defense is going to be able to slow them down enough. So I'm going with North Murray. Moving to Region 7, 5A, Rome at Cass, two teams that are out of the playoff hunt but would like to finish the season on positive notes. Look, I've said it all year. Rome's Achilles Hill is turnovers. Last week they turned the ball over five times and they, you know, they had a chance, even with those turnovers, they had a chance to win that game and, and it just came back to bite them in the rear end. I think that Rome's going to go out fighting though. That's a great, that offense has improved so much. Josh Perkins and Jai Creamer, the most successful quarterback to wide receiver combination Rome High School has ever had. Without those turnovers throughout the season, we'd be talking playoffs right now for Rome, not so much. However, I do believe they beat Cass on Friday, Matt. I think that when you have a situation where you got two teams that don't have the opportunity to make the playoffs, sometimes it comes down to which team is more up for the yeah. game. And I think there's a lot of fight in this Rome team, and they weren't that far away from starting to put the pieces yeah. together. So I think that's one of the most unfortunate things when you look at their record, is they it felt like they were getting close. 
And so I think that when you have that type of situation, there's a lot of motivation to keep going. And I think Franco Perkins will have him ready and Rome will win the game. Definitely. Unity at Nathaniel Green Academy moving to the GIC AA. Unity got another big win last week. Look, Unity controls its own destiny. Win this week and the next week against Fullington Academy, they will have one of the top two spots in the playoffs in a first-round home playoff win. Nathaniel Green 0-4 in the region right now. But again, we know nothing about them other than their record. I watched Unity last week. Unity is a solid ball club. I think Coach Mark Ackerman and his staff have done a phenomenal job with these guys. You know, I remember talking to him at the beginning of the season, and they were really hoping for a 500 record. And right now, they're better than 500 with a couple more wins. They'll be a lot better than 500. I think Unity wins this one possibly running away. Matt? I agree with you. I'm really impressed with what Coach Ackerman's been able to do there this year. And I remember the first time I'd ever had the opportunity to talk to him, you can just tell in that yeah. first conversation, this guy knows how to coach a football team. And I think he's done a phenomenal job. And these kids are really working hard to get themselves to where they want to be. And so I've got uh, a lot of faith in Unity right now at this point in time. And so even though I don't know that much about Nathaniel Green Academy, I still think that some way Unity will win the game. Gotcha. One last game to talk about. Walker at Tryon and the Bulldogs are in must-win mode. They have fallen below that magical number 16 spot in the power rankings. They have got to win their next two games if they want to have any hope of reaching the playoffs. I think Tryon is a playoff team. They may not be a top-notch playoff team, but I think they're a playoff team. I think they beat Walker. Matt? Yeah, I'm not really sure what's happened with Tryon this year. I know that the folks up in that general area really had high hopes for this team going into the season. And I think in some ways, for whatever reason, they've just not lived up to the expectations yeah. that people had of them. But I still think there's a lot of potential with this team. And Walker, they're a team that's just not been able to put things together at all this year. They've really struggled. So I think Tryon's a better football team, and I especially think that playing at home you know, that they've got a, a decided advantage in this game. So I'll go with trying. Gotcha. And that's a wrap for the show. Lots of picks we've made. Matt, where will you be this Friday night? <laughs> We're going to be at the game of the week. We're going to be at Coosa at Darlington. And very excited about it. I'm going to be calling the game with Phillip Edge. And so we'll sort of have a combination of our Darlington broadcast that we normally do on WLAQ and our Northwest Georgia game of the week. And we'll be shifting things over to the FM side for this one. Gotcha. So excited about it. Big enough game to do that. Of course, we'll have full coverage of all the night's games, live scoring updates, PrepCentralOnline.com, Rome News Tribune dash RomeNews-Tribune.com. I can't remember my own website for crying out loud. Uh, all scoring updates later in the evening, articles, photos, and of course next week, Gridiron Central, we'll be breaking down what happened last week and talking about the last week of the season and that magical word, I say way too early in the season, but it's, it actually fits right now, the playoffs. For Jackson Witzel, Matt Davis, I'm Jim Allred saying we'll see you on the sidelines. <laughs>